Hi, this is Mrs. Wiederholt, and welcome to my lesson video on expressions, equations, and inequalities, a review. Now let's get started. Simplifying expressions is simply rewriting an expression in its simplest terms. We simplify expressions by using order of operations. I'm sure you learned order of operations back in middle school, but let's go over them again just in case you've forgotten. The first operation you look for when simplifying an expression is distribution. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, you just wrote parentheses, but yet you said distribution is the first operation. Well, when we perform distribution, we are looking at the parentheses to see if there's any numbers or terms that we can distribute. So yes, when we learned order of operations, we learned the acronym PEMDAS meaning we look at the parentheses to see if there are any terms we can distribute. Second, we look for exponents. Third, we look for multiplication and division. And fourth, we look for addition and subtraction. Now when you are looking for terms that can be multiplied and divided, it's important that you understand that you do not go through the expression and only pick out the terms you can multiply and then go back through the expression and only uh, divide the terms that can be divided. That is not how you do it. You start at the beginning or the left side of your equation and you go through looking for multiplication or division. And whichever one of those two happens first, the, that's what you do first. And The same is true as for addition and subtraction. You start at the left side and you look for terms that are being added or subtracted and you take care of them as you see them. You will see that in the examples on the next page. I also want you to understand that you may or may not need to use every operation. Now let's look at some examples. Our first example is 2 times negative 8 minus 5d. So in our order of operations, we are first looking for parentheses, which we have. That means we're going to distribute. So let's go ahead and do that. That means we say 2 times 8, or excuse me, 2 times negative 8, and 2 times negative 5d. So 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, and 2 times negative 5d is negative 10d. So I write minus 10d. Now I look at what I have now, negative 16 minus 10d, and then I say, are there any exponents? No. Are there any terms that need to be multiplied or divided? No. And are there any terms that can be added or subtracted? Well, since negative 16 and negative 10d are not like terms, I cannot add or subtract them. So this expression has been simplified. Now let's look at negative 4d minus 5 minus 2d plus 3. I first look for any parentheses and I don't see any. So next I look for exponents. I don't see any exponents. So now I'm looking for multiplication and or division. And none of these terms are being multiplied or divided. So that leads me to our fourth operation which is add or subtract. And yes, I do see subtraction signs and an addition sign. So remember, when you're adding or subtracting terms, they have to be alike. So I can combine the negative 4d and the negative 2d. And that would be negative 6d. Now I'm going to look at negative 5 plus 3, and that would be negative 2. So I write minus 2. Now if I look at what I have now, negative 6d minus 2, these are unlike terms and so it is fully simplified. So that expression is now simplified. Now let's look at 2g plus 3 times negative 8 plus 5g. So I first look through the expression looking for parentheses. And if I look through, there you go. I have parentheses, which means I'm going to distribute. So I'm going to rewrite the 2g, because I'm not changing it yet, not doing anything with it. 
So I have 2g plus, okay, well, what is positive 3 times negative 8? Well, that's negative 24. So I'm just going to write minus 24. Remember, you could put plus negative 24, but it's simpler to write minus 24. Now I'm looking at the 3 times the 5g. Well, 3 times 5 is 15, or I should say positive 3 times positive 5 is positive 15 times g. So I have plus 15g. Now that I've taken care of my parentheses, I go back through the expression looking for exponents, and I don't see any. Now I'm going to go back through the expression looking for any multiplication or division. Well, I don't see any again. So that means I'm left with addition and subtraction, and I definitely see addition and subtraction. So now I have to find my like terms, which in this case is 2g and 15g. So I can combine those, and I have 17g. And the only term I have left is minus 24. Now, and we can easily see that 17g minus 24 is fully simplified. Now let's review solving equations and inequalities. When solving equations and inequalities, there are four basic steps to know. Now you need to remember that you may or may not use all of these steps in every equation or every inequality. Let's look at the first one. It's distribute. First thing you might need to do when solving an equation is you might need to distribute terms. After you distribute terms, you might need to then combine your like terms. Next, after you combine like terms, you will isolate the variable. That means if you're dealing with x's in your equation, you would want to get x by itself. That's what it means to isolate the variable. And then the last thing is you need to simplify the remaining terms. Now here's a hint for solving inequalities. If you are multiplying or dividing by a negative number, then you flip the inequality sign. Meaning if your inequality sign is this way, but you're having to divide or multiply by a negative number, you would then flip it going the other direction. Now let's look at some examples. First we have the example 12 equals negative 4 times negative 6x minus 3. First I'm going to look and see if there are any terms that I can distribute. And there are. I can distribute the negative 4 to the negative 6x and negative 3. So I'm going to rewrite 12 equals, because I'm not changing that or working with that yet. Negative 4 times negative 6x is a positive 24x. And then negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12, so I write plus 12. Next, I'm going to see if there are any terms, any like terms that I can combine. Now, if I look at the right side of this equation, there are no like terms, so there's nothing to combine. So because of that, I can go ahead and start to isolate the variable. And so when I isolate the variable, I want to move whichever term is added or subtracted first, and then divide or multiply by the number that is being multiplied to the x. So when isolating the variable, I'm first going to subtract 12. On the right side of the equation, it's plus 12, so I'm going to subtract 12 from the right side and subtract 12 from the left side. Now when I do that, these 12's cancel out. On the left side, 12 minus 12 is 0. So I have 0 equals 24x. Now I'm ready to, let's say, undo the multiplication of 24 times x. And how do you undo multiplication? You divide by it. So I'm going to divide each side of the equation by 24. So on the right side of the equation, my 24 divided by 24 is 1. So that means I have 1x, or simply x. And on the left side of the equation, I have 0 divided by 24, which is 0. So I have x equals 0. Now, it is always a good idea to check your work. So I'm going to rewrite my original equation, 
12 equals negative 4 times negative 6. Instead of 6 times x, it's 6 times 0 minus 3. Now, looking in the parentheses, negative 6 times 0 is 0, and 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So I have 12 equals negative 4 times negative 3. And since negative 4 times negative 3 equal 12, it's obvious my left side equals my right side, which means my solution of 0 equals x is correct. Now let's look at the next example. 20 is greater than or equal to 2 times 4 plus 3x. On the right side of the inequality, I see that I can distribute. So I'm going to rewrite 20 is greater than or equal to 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 3x is 6x. Okay, so 20 is greater than or equal to 8 plus 6x. Now on the right side of the inequality, I don't have any like terms that I can combine, so I'm ready to start isolating the variable x. So first I'm going to subtract the right side from 8 and the left side by 8. So on the left side I have 20 minus 8 is 12, and that's 12 is greater than or equal. The 8 minus 8 cancels out, so I'm left with 6x on the right side of the inequality. Now I'm ready to undo my multiplication of the 6 times the x, so I do that by division. So on the left side of the equation I have 12 divided by 6, which is 2. And on the right side of the inequality I have 6 divided by 6, which is 1, so I'm left with x. Now because I did not divide by a negative number, my inequality sign stays in the same direction. Now our solution can be read two ways. It can be read from left to right as 2 is greater than or equal to x. But it could also be read from right to left. x is less than or equal to 2. Now let's go ahead and check it. We have 20 is greater than or equal to 2 times 4 plus 3 times x instead of 3 times x, it's 3 times 2, which is 6. So on the left side we have 20 is greater than or equal, and we can go ahead and add the 4 and 6 in the parentheses, which is 10, and then we can say 2 times 10 is 20. And this statement is true, 20 is greater than or equal to 20. So our solution is correct. For this last example, I would like for you to pause the video and I would like for you to attempt it on your own. Once you have tried it, push play and then check your answer against mine. Okay, now check yours against mine. I hope you noticed that this time we had to flip the inequality symbol. And why is that? Because we divided by a negative number. Now I hope this video has been a good review on how to solve um, equations and inequalities and how to simplify equations, inequalities, and expressions. I look forward to working with you again. Bye-bye.